December. It is December and it's my favorite time of year. Why is it my favorite time of year? Because it's Christmas. Christmas. I love Christmas hats and Christmas clothes and Christmas candy and Christmas carols and Christmas desserts and yeah, that's right. There's a lot of Christmas things. I love Christmas. And my favorite part of Christmas is this. What is this, Smith? Tori? Yeah. <laughs> this is our Christmas advent calendar. Except it looks a little bit different because these are blocks. Each one of these blocks has a number on them. Can you see the numbers? We have all the way from the 1st of December to the 25th. What happens on December 25th? Christmas. Christmas. And so we are going to count down the days until Christmas with our advent calendar blocks. Now these advent calendar blocks don't just talk about fun things about Christmas like angels and singing songs and blowing trumpets and tying presents. I, I forgot presents are one of my favorite things about Christmas too. Yeah. <laughs> but this is telling us about something even more important in Christmas. About God's story. See, God's story doesn't start with Christmas. And it definitely didn't start with you. It didn't start with me. It didn't end with Christmas. God's story goes all the way from the beginning all the way to where we are now. And we get to learn about how much God loves us and how his love goes all the way through the story. The story of Christmas! Is that? <laughs> <laughs> so the story of Christmas. And so that's what we're gonna talk about today, okay? So we're gonna use our Advent blocks and the book called The King is Coming to talk about God's story and the real story of Christmas, all right? So let's start here in the very, very beginning. So how does the story start? How, does it, how, how would you start a story? Once upon a time. Once upon a time. That's a very good way to start a story. How else can we start a story? In a galaxy far, far, <laughs> a long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. Or, you know, lots of other ways that you can start a story. But that's not how God starts his story. How does he do it then? God said, in the beginning, that's how he started his story. You remember that in the beginning. What happened in the beginning? He created the heavens and the earth. God created the heavens and the earth. Very good. And in Genesis, we learn about how God created the heavens and the earth in the very, very beginning. See, the story, like I said, your story, my story, your story, it doesn't just start with you. Like I said a minute ago, our stories all start from the very, very beginning. And in the very, very beginning, there was almost nothing. There were no people, no houses, no animals, no plants, not you, not me, nothing. But there was someone, who was it? God. God, God was there, exactly. And he was ready to write the greatest story anyone has ever told. It's our story, all of us. Yours, mine, every person that's ever lived. And it's a story about how much God loves his people. And about how far away God seems sometimes. But is God really far away? He just seems far away sometimes. But do you know, does God leave us far away? No. This story talks about how, how big God will go and how, how far God will go to get his people back. And it's a story about God making the wrong turn right and the dark turn light. And it's, it turns out it's also the story of Christmas. Yes, it's the story of Christmas, but we can't get to Christmas yet. We have to start at the beginning. So don't let me get ahead of myself. In the beginning, there was nothing but God. So God looked around and he said, let there be light. And there was light. And that's, that's what happened. There, there was. He said, let there be light. And there was light. It was just like that. And he said, this is, this is good. This is good. And then he saw all the empty space. And he said, let's make stars and moon and sun. And he did. 
And then he saw that and he said, it's good, it's good, <laughs> it's very good. And then he saw the empty earth and he said, I'm mm, sorry, boring empty earth, let's make meadows and mountains and rivers and flowers and trees and fish and birds and hippopotamus and horses and spiders. <laughs> and he saw all of that that he made and he said, this is good. All of the things God made were good. But did he stop there? No. No. He saved the best for last. You know what it was? People. People. God made a man. The man's name was? Adam. Adam. And then God made a woman, and her name was? Eve. Eve. And they were special because God made them to think and to act just like him. Just like him. He said, let's make them in our image, right? And so God, God didn't just, do you think God just said, oh yeah, it's pretty good. That, no, God saw how special his people were that he made. And he didn't say it was just good. He said, it is very good. Because he thought that we were special because we were made in his image. And I that you were like children to God. So the, it's no surprise that the first thing that they heard him say was, I love you. I love you. <laughs> I know. Well, Adam and Eve lived every day with God in creation. And this is where we start day number one in our blog. Right here, day number one. Because that's what we're talking about. The very, very first day in creation. So I hope you hold this for us so that they can see. Day number one. And they, let's see, Adam and Eve lived every day with God in a garden that God had made. A special garden. Can you turn it to the garden for me? There we go. It's an apple. Can you show you want to show our friends? And the apple, because apples grow in a garden. And God had put Adam and Eve in a garden called Eden. And everything was good until something went wrong. God had told Adam and Eve that they could eat from all the fruits of all of the trees except for one. God said, don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Don't do it, or the world will be filled with darkness. And death will come very close, and I will seem very far away. But there was a snake in the garden who lied to Adam and Eve. It's a talking snake. I know. <laughs> so the talking snake. But it wasn't really just any old snake. I know, spoiler alert. And he lied to Adam and Eve. And the snake said, it's not wrong. No, don't. You don't have to listen to what God said. The world, the world is, isn't going to be filled with darkness. Just one bite. What's, what's the worst that could happen? Well, Eve chose to trust in her own judgment instead of what God said. And so did Adam. They took a bite of the fruit. They took a bite of the fruit. And all of a sudden, sin entered the world. See, they chose their way over God's way, and that's called sin. And that is, that's the yucky stuff that we talk about we don't want in our hearts. Well, immediately, as soon as they disobeyed God, everything changed. God knew what had happened, and his heart began to break. Remember, God loved Adam and Eve very much, right? Well, God went to check on Adam and Eve, but all they wanted to do was hide. They didn't want to see him anymore. So God gave them the terrible thing they really wanted, to go away from him. So God sent Adam and Eve out of the garden and far away. In the years to come, life was difficult, and the ground was hard. And when the world was filled with wrong and darkness, Adam would think back to the garden. He would remember the day when God was with him and Eve. That's kind of a sad way to end our first day with our Advent calendar. But do you think it ends there, Abby? No, it doesn't end there. See, even when God was sending them out of the garden, he was telling them, even when he was sending them out of the garden, he told them a promise that it wasn't over. It's a promise that it wasn't over. We're going to put our, our apple right here to remind us 
and God's promise is not over. Let's let's put let's put our star right here on the apple for day number one. And we're gonna say, we're, we're gonna remember that the story isn't over. See, outside the garden, God seemed far away. But Adam and Eve began to hope and to pray. God, will you bring us back one day? God, will you come back to stay? Well, we're going to see. We're going to see what happens next. Tomorrow, when we turn number two over. Bye-bye.